So good afternoon, everybody. Hope you had uh, an enjoyable lunch. And um, I'm very glad that um, I'm having this opportunity of participating in the 15th um, Jailia conference that has so much archaeology to talk about. <laughs> um, and our first uh, lecturer is Professor Christian Rubin, Rubin, who, while some people were still trying to get used to the fact that they can go out of their houses uh, after Corona, Professor Rubin was deep into the gorges uh, in Southern Arabia doing his uh, survey uh, with a team of six in October 2021. Um, Professor Rubin, I think uh, everybody knows, but uh, let's just remind a few things. A member of the Institut de France, uh, Emeritus uh, director, director of uh, Research, uh, CNRS, uh, where he served as documentalist uh, then researcher since 1970. Uh, he's a member of the Académie d'Inscription et Belles Lettres since two, uh, 2005 and was honored to receive a Festschrift Sabine Studies in the same year. He is fellow of the Deutsche Archaeologie uh, Institute in Berlin and ex Instituto Italiano per il Medio Estremo Oriente in Rome and received the decoration of the Legion de in 2008. Well, uh, well, he is, uh, now we're gonna go start going south. <laughs> He's the founder of the French Center of Research in Sana um, and was the first director between 1982 and 1986. Uh, and he directed several uh, more institutions, but what we want uh, actually to focus here is on his field work and his uh, important field work uh, dealing uh, with the uh, many inscriptions and carved uh, gravures uh, on the rocks uh, of, uh, of Southern Arabia. And what we will listen now is about his work um, in 2021, northeast, right, of Najran northeast of Najran, where they found in this short three-week excavation, not excavation, survey, three dozens of inscriptions, something like that? Even more, even more. So it's a never-ending uh, repertoire of inscriptions. So I have the honor to invite Professor Roba to address his uh, paper. Uh, thank you, Katia, for this nice uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for uh, the organizers of, the, of this conference. It's my uh, seventh participation, so it's a milestone. I hope more seven, but uh, it depends on God. Al-Onejran is well known. It's on the border between Yemen and uh, Saudi Arabia. This is a view from a, a Google picture. Uh, the border is in uh, yellow, and Hima is about 100 kilometers north northeast of Nejran, at the limit between the range of mountains along the Red Sea and uh, the Great Plateau, which is the central desert of Saudi Arabia. This is a uh, map Hima, more precisely. Hima is the name of this big zone with two with two oh, excuse me, with two mountains, Jebel yes, 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 El Qara and Jebel El Kaukab. Oh, during uh, the we began the research servers in uh, uh, twenty zero six, and we are doing a general survey of the region and in some places a complete inventory and. During this complete inventory in the southern part of Jebel el Kaukab, we visited this small valley called El Rudayen. This is uh, the canyon, not at the end of the valley, but in the middle part of the valley. There are many cavities uh, in the rock, which is uh, sandstone, uh, uh, cavities uh, who collect uh, water other cavities, 
And uh, we visited the place at the end, uh, after the summer, and there was still water in these cavities. It's possible on this picture, on these two other pictures. So it's a place where water is abundant all along the year when the water is not consumed by people. And on the two banks, there are thousands of, of, of uh, engraving. So it's impossible to, to, to give numbers because in the region of Hima, it's apparently more than one million, at least, uh, because uh, on each side you have at least a thousand uh, uh, engraving, and there are thousands of sites. Here is a funerary stella. You can recognize uh, the face of the, of the man, uh, the two eyes, uh, and the nose. And uh, by chance, uh, we uh, found uh, this uh, well-known character, a man called uh, the Tamim Dukhasmalat, which was the secretary of Sharah il Yaqbul, the general sent by the Jewish king of Himyar to curb the Najran revolt in the spring 523. Just near this first inscription, there is a, this a, a huge panel. Another time, an inscription by Tamim Dukhasim Allat. You have the name here. The mention of Nejran. He said, when I did operations, military operations in Nejran, with his master, Sharahil Duyazan, so we have all the indication. There is no uh, precision, but uh, the identity is sure. And near this first one, another Tamim, Tamim Muqtawil Hayat Ben Gadanum. So it's another officer called also Tamim, which is uh, the officer of a Sabian prince. The Hayatat Duyazan is a Hadrami prince. This is the complete panel. And in the uh, uh, downstream of the valley, there is a big rock discovered by these two uh, Saudi colleagues with an inscription by the tribal chief who commands the contingent of the Hamdan tribe during uh, this uh, campaign. The name of this chief is Abdum Dumarran. This is a text, you can see the stone is covered by the inscription. And on the same place, the inscription, excuse me, the inscription of Abdum is here. On the top of the bank, there is a large uh, uh, panel uh, with uh, very convenient for inscriptions. Uh, it's almost impossible to see from the valley uh, that there is an inscription on the top because the distance is about 100 meters and there is this huge inscription in direction of the left, here in direction of the, uh, of the right. You can see uh, it's not uh, easy to climb uh, to, to copy the text and to take photographs. It's a very impressive text. It's a, the, the frame, the natural frame is fantastic, and the text is perfectly preserved. Uh, there is no one letter which is difficult to read. And the text is dated July 523, it commemorates all the operations carried out since King Joseph rejected Ethiopian tutelage in the autumn of 522. Alors, you know the martyrdom of the Christians of Nejran. It's probably better to speak of the Nejran crisis. The previous sources for this crisis were three great inscriptions like the one we discovered, sponsored by the chief of the army sent by, uh, by the king, excuse me, that guy, Joseph, the princes, Sharah il Yaqbul Duyazan. Previously, eight small texts were known and some signatures, I mean by that, text with only a name and titles. And we have manuscript uh, the texts, four Christian texts in Syriac and Greek, 
and I will return to this text later. In 21, we added two Greek inscriptions, 12 small texts, and 10 of new signatures. I already presented uh, the old text in, 200, in 2006 in this conference. The top inscription, this is uh, the copy of the text. I read the text because it's interesting to see what is said in an epigraphic text. It's not like in a manuscript. Uh, the language is very specific and only some subjects are treated. Prince Sharah il Yaqbul, son of Shurih bil Yakmul, Banu Yazan, Gadanum, Nas'an, Habbum, Raba, princes of the commune, the term used for the South Arabian tribes, Rathahum, Deifatan, and Sakalan, chiefs and governors of the two communes, Seban and Amran. It gives the complete title of the princes of uh, Duyazan, the family Duyazan. It's useful to analyze uh, this title. Banu Yazan is a famous family, the head of the territorial principality of the Hadramaut, encompassing Wadi Marcha, Wadi Dura, and Wadi Abadan. It's uh, the south, uh, southwestern part of Hadramaut. Banu Gadanum, alors, from uh, the Yazan, Saif Ibn the Yazan, is uh, the famous uh, king of the, of the end of the sixth century, which is celebrated uh, in many ways uh, by the tradition. Only one uh, the Yazan is known by the tradition. Banu Gadanum are lineage, lineage of Sabaean princes owning large land estates in Maareb, Yemen, Jof, and probably Najran. The most famous is uh, the poet Al Qama ibn Dijadan. The date is not well known, but according to Lofgren, probably from the Umayyad period. These princes, Gadanum, pay allegiance, pay allegiance to the Banu Yazan, though it's not clear what this entails. Habum is the lordly lineage of the Wadi Dura in Hadramaut, and Nas'an and Rabba, erase uh, Habum that, uh, are not known except by two texts of, of Ahima. The names of the tribes, Rathahum, Deifatan, Sakalan, are, uh, donc, the, first, the three first ones are Hadrami communes, Sakalan, is the ancient name of Dufar uh, in Oman. Seban is probably a tribe. The, the name is attested till now. Uh, this one is uh, living till now. Seban is between the Wadi Hadramaut and the sea. And Amaran, we don't know. We have no precision about it. And we have also five lineage. So it could be possible in principle to connect each tribe with each lineage, but it doesn't work. The prince took up a position against Nejran with a unit provided by the Az'un and with the troops of the House of Hamdan, villagers and Arabs, and with Arabs from Murad, Kidda, and Madahij. So a new time, we have very interesting information. Az'un is the plural of Yazani, the Nisba formed on the name the Yazan. Yazan with the Amza between the Zain and the Nun. In Arab, so Azun is the plural of Yazani, and it means in that case the tribes under the control of the Yazan. In Arabic, the name is attested once in the, with the writing Azun, Azun with the, the loss of the Abza. But in Al Hamdani, the name is Aizun, because after the loss of the Abza, they formed a new name with the three consonants Yazana, with the same shame, uh, the same scheme, Afrul, Yazana, Aizun. So we can see the evolution of the language in the evolution of the names of this group of tribes. Alors, Az'un doesn't refer to the princes, but to the people directed by the princess Duyazan. 
the troops of the house of Hamdan, villagers in Arab, in, pre in previous inscriptions, we have four great inscriptions, all of them with the same information, but written in a different way. In the previous inscription, we had with the tribes of Duhamdan, Be Ashub Duhamdan. Here, we have the addition of the word Beit and the disparition of the, uh, uh, the particle Du. So it's a precision showing that uh, the prince mean not uh, the tribe of Hamdan, but uh, the family of the princes of Hamdan. And this troop of the of Zuh Hamdan have been described in two categories, those of the villages, Hagaran, and the Arabs. So in the population of Hamdan, there are two groups of, uh, of persons, apparently in the mountain, the men, sedentaries, which are villages, and in the periphery, uh, the people uh, which are called Arabs. I come back later on this point. And the last groups are the three groups, Azun, Hamdan, and the Arabs of Murad, Kidda, Madhij. Murad is a famous tribe. There was a fight between Murad and Hamdan near the date of Hijra for the control of Yemeni Jov. It's a uh, unique uh, uh, detail showing where is located uh, Murad. Murad is now found, the name is still living, uh, south of Sanaa. Kinda, the name is still living, but uh, in some places only, is a famous uh, tribe of the desert who settled in western Hadramaut in the 4th century and had also some groups in southern Yemen and uh, was governors of Central Arabia for the count of uh, the king of Himyar. And uh, Madhij is a tribe between uh, Nejran and uh, Qarat el Fawf, 300 kilometers to the north, and uh, during that time was dominated by the kings of Kinda. The kings of Kinda are called kings of Kinda and Madhij. So three groups of troops and some inscriptions mention, two inscriptions, mention another group, a fourth group, which is called the Saba, and uh, co probably constituted by the Sabian settled in Nejran and in the neighboring commune of Raula Nagdudan, whose uh, central city is Saba, about 50 kilometers uh, south of Nejran. After he assisted his lord, King Yusuf Asar, when he was fighting with the Abyssinian at Zafar and killed them all and burned down their church. So we have here the word church. The information is al already uh, found in uh, the previous inscriptions here. The point interesting is to have Kalas written with S3 and not S1. It's a small detail. The two consonants are confused in the late language uh, of Himyar. It's evidently the word Qalis uh, of the tra Arabic tradition and uh, deriving from Ecclesia. And when the word is uh, vocalized, Qulis, uh, uh, in the Arabic text, uh, I, I suppose it's an innovation of Islamic period because during the antiquity, it was certainly pronounced Qalis. And after the king sent them with an army against the Abyssinians, Farasan and Muhawan and killed them all and captured their daughter and set to fire the church and joined the king at, Ash at Ash'aran and he plundered until he joined the king with 12. So here there is a word which is not well understood. Oh. <clears throat> Farasan are not the islands of Farasan. Uh, near Jazan, on the border between uh, Saudi Arabia and Yemen. It's a tribe in the region of Mocha, attested in the 10th century by El Hamdani. So it's completely sure for the localization. So we can suppose that Mohawan is the city of the tribe of uh, Farasan. 
Asharan is in Arabic al Ashar, which is famous. Uh, the, the tribe uh, disappeared, uh, is still attested in the 10th century, and in that time it was uh, the main tribe of uh, the uh, littoral re uh, regions. What he captured until he joined the king was 1,500 killed, 1,800 prisoners, and 9,500 captures of camels, cattle, and goats. The sum of all that the king and his armies and his armies made as booty was 13,000 killed, 11,500 11, prisoners, 280,000 captures of, of camels, cattle, and goats. And when the king took a stand against the Abyssinians and fortified the chain of Maddaba, and when strengthened his law on brothers, the prince Lahayat Yarkham Sumuyafa Ashwa and Shuruh Bil Asad Yazan. Madaban is El Mandab in, um, in Arabic, the famous uh, name of the street at the southern part of the Red Sea. And as for in the prince, he would send an occupying force until Negran submitted to what he liked. And finally, the conclusion formulas, the wish that God would grant to the king, and may the God of heaven and earth grant the king Yusuf Asar with profusion and a word which is not understood, in the month of Dhumadaran 633, which is July 523, the certainty that higher forces will prevent the text from being destroyed, it was true till the present time, with the protection of heaven and earth, that these inscriptions shall be preserved from damage, destruction, and removal. And the signature of the secretary, peace, engraved these inscriptions, Tamim Dhu Qasamallah Sabin. Normally, in the Jewish text, uh, peace is written shalom. Here, for the first time, it's written salam uh, yeah, uh, in Arabic and probably not in Sabaic. So this is the position, the re respective position of the two great historical texts. And the second one, this is the, the beginning of the transcription, the middle part and the end. Although the text is also with a, a lot of proper names which are, which are not very uh, familiar uh, to the Islamist and Arabist, most of them are rather well known by uh, specialists of Yemen. Abdum, Dumaran, Yafran, Uzar, Haumatan, when uh, there is no vocalization, it is not attested in Arabic sources, so it's, uh, the, the vocalization is hypothetic. Malikatan, Shauran, Ashyab, Tibaum, head of the house of the Hamdan and Suran, the Ma'afar, Ma'afaratan, the Anbar, Sayunian, the Aswaf, Kaubayan, Agra, Ma'asharum, Modaf, Yathaum, the Album, Akabatum, Adamu. So we can see here that half, half of the name are not attested, approximately. Abdum Dumaran, there are two points which are interesting uh, immediately. There is no epithet. You can see all the novel have two names, the proper names and an epithet, and they mention their father. Here, Abdum has no epithet and no patronym. So it's probably a new uh, nominated person in the position he's, occu he's occupying and was not the successor of his father. He's uh, the first of the family to occupy this position. I don't enter perhaps in the detail of uh, all uh, these names uh, which are not well known, uh, only to say that uh, El Hamdani uh, 400 years later, the, the great specialist of the genealogy of, the, of Yemen retained of all these names only Ajra and Aswaf. In uh, the manuscript, it's written Aswaq, and have no idea of the real meaning of the, these uh, names. <clears throat> and the officers, cavalry captains, hunters, Arabs of the Hamdan in their mountains and the lowlands. 
The text distinguishes between two categories of Arabs according to their habitats, those of the mountains and those of the coastal areas. The wording is reminiscent of the titulary of the kings of Himyar after the annexion of Desert Arabia, Malik Saba, wa Duraydan, wa Hadramaut, wa Yamnat, Yamanat it means the south, and is Arabs of Taudum and Tihamat. So we have in the two texts, Taudum and Tihamat, and uh, there will be probably discussion about the real meaning of these two terms, which are not completely clear. While their lord, the King Yusuf Asar, sent them with a charge from them to take a stand at Negran against those in rebellion, it's repeated twice, among their townspeople in a criminal manner, with Prince Shrahil Duyazan, Saba, the Vusukhim, Murad, Madhij, and Kidda. This is the, one of the two texts mentioning the participation of Saba uh, to uh, the uh, the, the war. And they undertook the consign while the king sent them from Ash'aran after they fought the Abyssinians, defeated them, and destroyed their church and the church in Mahawan, so a second church, and a church in Laqabat, perhaps uh, the transcription of El Qubba, I don't know. And that he left none of the Abyssinians alive and he fought Asharan. So we have here the first mention of the third church in Laqabat, but a place name which is not in the identified. It's in the vicinity of Mocha, without any doubt. And he killed 13,000 of them and made 11,000 prisoners. And out of the text, we have the formula, the religious formula. The curse of Rahmanan was in heaven against anyone who would destroy this inscription. Alors, some general remarks about the nomenclature of uh, the, so, uh, the society. Before Islam, the tribes have always a name which is a new name without a term of parenté, uh, 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 connection with uh, the, the family, uh, with the genealogy. The names are, for instance, Himyar, Pakilum, Dumariyama, Mudar, Ma'al, Abdel Qais, and so on. And the family in charge of the tribes, in the contrary, have always a name beginning by Banu. Banu in Sabah, it's always like that. In Himyar, it's sometimes Banu, sometimes Dhu, because they are changing. Uh, 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 Stylistically, they, they like to change the formulation. We saw it with Duhamdan, Beit Hamdan, and so on. And after Islam, it's exactly the contrary. Most of the tribes have a name which is found on the family with a name introduced by Banu, Ayal, Aulad, and so on. So it's interesting to see how we change from the ancient system to the new one. And here we have a step between uh, the, uh, the two organizations. For instance, Hamdan, although we, we begin with Duyazan, from the third to the fourth century, it's only a lineage name. In the sixth century, we have the lineage, and we have a group of tribes which are called Aizun, a name derived from the name of the lineage. And in the 10th century, we have only Aizun. Hamdan and Suran. From the first to the third century, Banu Hamdan are the princes of Hashid, a name, as I said, till now, it's a big tribe uh, till now, commune of the third of Samai. And Banu Suran, are princes of Bakil, a fraction, Zureida. In the third century, when uh, the Himyarite controlled all Arabia, there is a change. The Banu Hamdan became the chief of Suran, and the group was called Banu Hamdan wa Suran. At the beginning of the sixth century, the commune of the house Hamdan and Suran are brought under the authority of the ruler, which we, who is no longer Ben Hamdan wa Suran, but uh, he said the head of the house of Hamdan and Suran. It's a big change. Around six. 
130, there is a delegation of Hamdan, which is a tribe with all the components of the tribe of Hamdan. And in the 10th century, Hamdan is a tribe. So it's possible to see how the names from a lineage became uh, names of tribes. Banu al Harith ben Kaab. Al Harith ben Kaab is the name of the martyr of Najran in 523. The son of Al Harith was appointed governor of Najran by Yabraha. The social group led by the descendant of the martyr, all the tribes, are called Banu al Harith ben Kaab around 600. And the descendants of the Marte are now called Banu Abd al Madan. So we can see changes, permanent changes, in the denomination of the groups and the many tribes taken, taking the name of the princes or the lords uh, to designate themselves because there were new uh, configuration of the tribes, so new configuration without a proper name, a real proper name. They can choose an ancient proper name or keep an ancient proper name, but many of them adopted a new name derived from the name of the chiefs. <laughs> Banu Marra, before Islam, several ancient lineage are called Banu Barran, but it, uh, they are details. In the 6th century, the Marran lineage is probably a continuation of one of these lineage. And in the Islamic period, we have the delegation of Hamdan sent to Muhammad. Wafta Hamdan, Ahmuruha, wa Arabuha, in the edition Ghurbuha. Uh, and the explanation by Ibn Sa'ad, wa Ahmuruha Qudam, wa al Marran, we found the same the Marran in the delegation of Hamdan to Muhammad, al Awa, Lawa, Banu Suran, because Lawa is the son of Suran. وَأَذْوَ هَمْدَانَ وَعَرْبُهَا Donc, the Arabs of Hamdan, Arhab wa Nihamu Shaqir wa Wada'a wa Yam wa Murhiba wa Dalan wa Gharif wa Udhar. All names which are living today. And here, we can compare the Hamirite of Hamdan and the Arab of Hamdan with the expression in the inscriptions, Hagaran de Hamdan and Araban de Hamdan. So, it means... Since uh, the late antiquity, there were two groups in Hamdan, the Himyarite, of, uh, the people of ancient culture, of South Arabian ancient culture, and the people of uh, the desert. Alors, the main new feature of the, the new text are Bon, first, uh, uh, some points, of, uh, some details which I presented now, but especially an army in the field engraving a staggering number of inscriptions. So during two months, uh, they wrote four big inscriptions and a lot of small inscriptions. It's possible uh, to reconstruct the chronology of this text. There are two secretaries and uh, the first one is written in June 523. Second text probably be, uh, written at the beginning of July 523. And the two texts we find are probably of late July of the same, of the same month. All the inscriptions give the number uh, of uh, uh, the, the accounts of the King uh, Joseph uh, campaign, it is surprising to see that there are changing, changes uh, in all the inscriptions. And uh, in my opinion, it means that there were discussions between the members uh, of the expedition, uh, recalculating the number of uh, uh, killed uh, prisoners uh, and animals and so on. And uh, well, the differences are not small, but uh, uh, are not big, but uh, uh, they are real differences. There are Arabic inscriptions near here. You have one. Now this is uh, the big text of Sharahil. Here, an officer, Muawiyah. Muqtawi, Muqtawi, Sharahil. So uh, it's an officer of the Yusuf army. And there is an Arabic text here. 
apparently Rahama Allah ala Malik ben something. It is uh, so close to the main text that I suppose at the beginning it was perhaps uh, from the same date. And there are others. Near the huge monograms of the prince, you have an Arabic text here, an Arabic text here. Ni'mat Allah, li, I am not able to read, Asmul. Alors, soit Ayadihi, soit Walid, at the end, Amin. Alif, Amin. We have Amin here also. So there are some difficult. In general, it's the Rahmat Allah. It's a formula very common. So uh, I was asking myself if it was Islamic or not. Uh, now I think they are Islamic because it's written Ben and not Bar, and none of the personal names have the Wow at the end. In the uh, pre-Islamic inscription, we have Qaisu, Kabu, and so on. Here, we have no wall vision. So, it's probably Islamic, but it is surprising to suppose at the beginning of Islam, somebody climbing on the top uh, of the bank and uh, writing, there is free place, a huge free place, but they write their names just near the ancient inscriptions. Uh, two other uh, Arabic inscription. So now I want uh, to show you the distribution of this text. So uh, we saw Rodayen is here. We saw the text of Rodayen. Now we go to Kaukab, uh, to uh, uh, Analkan, which is here. This is the text. A big text of Sharh il Yaqbul. This one dated June. El Hukun in the north of Jebel Kaukab. A nice wadi, a hall with water, and only a small text. Tamim Dukasmalat, the same secretary, mentioning Kaukab, Kaukaban. And mentioning the, this point uh, is interesting, saying the second month. So it was a text written at the end uh, of the occupation of the region of Hima. And uh, the campaign, the duration of the campaign is two months. Here another text. Another text with a more precision, Kaukaban and Hima. Uh, excuse me, Hima and Kaukaban. And we have a new time dimension of two months. So we have a good connection between the informations of all the texts. And finally, in the wells of Hima, this big one, which is not finished, the second one, A very strange campaign, as I explain. They spent all their time engraving inscription. The target of the campaign is Nejran. They are 100 kilometers from Nejran. And they do not mention filling of wells, cutting of palm tree, uh, act uh, of war. They are circulating around uh, the, two, uh, uh, the, the two mountains. Evidently, it's a campaign of intimidation. It's not a real war, not yet. The religious formula. I think it's your telephone. Excuse me. I think it's your telephone. My telephone. <laughs> no, my telephone is here. <laughs> Alors, the two formula. Alors. And may the God of heaven and earth grant to King Yusuf Asar with profession and... Uh, so it's completely neutral. Uh, 
it's not really a religious, uh, a religious war against uh, the people of Najran. Uh, there is no indication of Judaism, of, uh, uh, that uh, the enemies uh, are uh, Christian and so on. But there is a war against uh, the Abyssinians. Uh, yeah, you saw the killed of the Abyssinians. It was repeated several times. And the second one, the curse of Rahmanan, who is in heaven, against anyone who would destroy these inscriptions for them. Alors, brief, alors, I have uh, five minutes. Uh, a brief uh, comparison uh, with the manuscript uh, sources. There are two letters uh, written in Syriac, of a two text in the shape of the letter. We don't know if, uh, if it is a real letter. One attributed uh, to Simeon of Betasham, Betasham, which was a bishop of uh, the uh, monotheist church. Uh, in the Byzantine Empire. A second letter whose author is unknown, called the letter two, the history of the martyrs of Nejran with an introduction illuminating the origin of the conflict and so on, which is a very interesting text but fragmentary, uh, called the books of the Himi rites, and a, a, a geography that celebrates Aretas and the king of Ethiopia called Martyrdom of Aretas, which is in Greek. Alors, the validity of the historical informations uh, in these uh, manuscript uh, sources is uh, very good for all the things surrounding the events, but not for the, the martyrs themselves and for the speeches of the, martyr, of the martyrs which are very orthodox and very argumented. So the possibility to verify the validity of the informations are different. First, the sequence of events. First, Yusuf rebelled. He burned the church of the Abyssinian uh, in uh, Zafar and he killed all the Ethiopians. We have exactly the same description of the events in the manuscript. Secondly, in the Marti of Veritas, we have a description of the chain. The chain is mentioned in the four big text and is mentioned by a traveler in Yemen uh, Ibn al-Mujawir in the 13th century according to a source from a Yemeni text from the 10th century. The onomastics of the creation of Nejran. We have the list of 170, more than 170 martyrs. The onomastics of the list is the same as the onomastic of the inscriptions on the rocks of late antiquity. And one of the names, Haufa'am, is attested only in the graffiti of Ahima and in the list of the martyrs of Nejran is not attested in Himyaritic inscription. So evidently the authors of this text have very good information. So we can try to connect the chronology and uh, uh, the history of the events in the inscription and in the manuscripts. Alors, uh, I mentioned already, uh, no, enfin, what is saying exactly the letter two? The king sent three of his army leaders with their troops, which failed. The king sends a reinforcement, which also failed, and the king comes in person with an army of 120,000 men and obtains the surrender of the city against the promise of pardon, the Amman. So these description of the events correspond rather well with the atmosphere described by the inscriptions. It is the first stage when the king sent three of his army leaders with his troops. Uh, it was the moment where a compromise was searched between the two parts. It's possible to reconstruct a complete chronology, but it's perhaps not necessary uh, to enter in the detail, but uh, from the beginning of the crisis at the late uh, uh, 21 to 
uh, the uh, knowledge of the, uh, the massacre uh, in the Byzantine Empire at the beginning of 24, it's possible to put all the event in a complete sequence, and especially all the sequence uh, in connection with the descriptions. Judge July, the army around uh, Hima and uh, in Hima around Kaukaban and, and Kara, and the king arriving probably of uh, August uh, 23, uh, probably the, the failure of the army to take the Shran, just after the arriving of the king, November, the uh, surrender of the city and the massacre of the revolting Nazarenites. Hello, I, two minutes. I show some uh, recent uh, documents uh, discovered uh, during last months, uh, which are not yet published, but rather interesting. This is a Syriac inscription uh, discovered uh, in the city of Najran, in the park Fahad, with uh, two texts. The first one, with some difficulties uh, to read uh, the name of the, of the dead, and the second one, you can see the length of the lights is not exactly the same here and here. So we have two texts. And the second one, uh, the dead is uh, Yusuf, son of the uh, deacon Petros. The problem is the date of this text, according to specialists of Syriac inscriptions, it's the 9th or 10th century. It's rather late. A second text, which is interesting, this one, vertical lines, Arabic in vertical lines. Hello. It's better to put it horizontally. So it's possible to read, uh, I don't see very well from here, Shubha uh, Lemaran, first line, Syriac, written in Arabic. El Habis El Khati. El Khati, only the point is, is not completely sure if uh, the point is found or not. I suppose the point is not found. If uh, there is no point, El Khati, so it is Syriac. Uh, the, the, the hermit, uh, le recluse. Uh, El Khati, the sinner. And Rafar Allah, Lahu, Dunubahu, Amin, Yarab. And the writing is very late, uh, apparently uh, about uh, 9th, 10th century. Uh, it's difficult uh, to be sure, but uh, evidently after 800, uh, and probably a long time after 800. They have found also four uh, uh, stones uh, from a cemetery with crosses. I am not uh, big uh, pictures uh, uh, of the stones, and the formulas are completely Muslim. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and so on. And sometimes the name of Allah is written in a strange way. So there are many new documents changing the vision uh, of uh, the antiquities of Najran. And here, for example, we have Rafara. In uh, a Jewish text of Hima, we are uh, So the formula are attested not only in the Muslim inscription, but in Jewish, in Christian. So it was uh, the, the, the same religious atmosphere and uh, uh, expressions which were shared by all uh, uh, the religions uh, and perhaps others in the, in the region. Thank you. I use it. <clears throat> oh, okay. So thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kabon. This is really exceptional. And I think this is the dream of the historian and field uh, researcher to complement the data of uh, historical data, finding so much uh, information uh, firsthand, uh, actually forehand. <laughs> um, so um, I would like to open the floor for questions. Um, 
I have my own questions, but uh, let's. Uh, yes. Just a, a small point. Uh, we learned as graduate students that when we read historical texts about numbers, we should be wary. We shouldn't take them too seriously. But here I see that the numbers should actually be taken at face value. Mm -hmm. Could that could we extrapolate from your material about historical texts in general, or at least, uh, <laughs> or at least, you know, at least that we should we should not be so skeptical about the numbers. Uh, not always uh, skeptical. Sometimes uh, uh, it's well anyway. Uh, inscriptions are propaganda, so they don't lie, but they don't say all the truth. <laughs> huh? uh, so. All the informations in the inscriptions are, I, I, I think, uh, uh, truth, uh, worthy, uh, uh, they, they can be used, uh, surely. For instance, we know from one text that the troops of Yusuf were 12,000 persons. In uh, their geography, it became 120,000. So they added a zero, it's so a small point. <laughs> And also, it's a problem. 12,000 persons in the desert uh, during two months, even with some wells, uh, holes with water. Uh, how they organized uh, the campaign, I don't know. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Yes. Uh, I was, was going to ask very much the same uh, question. Um, is the, the numbers were extraordinary. It's like quarter of a million head of cattle, <laughs> is it something like this? And um, 24,000, I guess, people, if you add just about give or take. I mean, would Najran support a po really support a population that large, 24,000 people? I, I have no idea how to answer that question. And to give you like a comparison, so one of the texts I've been working on recently is the Sassanid capture of Jerusalem at 614, so about like 90 years later. And the number of dead uh, after that event is, according to that text, depending on the version, around 35,000 people. And usually we're told that is nonsense, right? Like, so this is like the, the, the old problem. Um, there are two kinds of sources, inscriptions, which are from the events. And uh, they can give an approximation because of their, uh, there was a competition between the different chiefs uh, saying, uh, I capture uh, such a number of uh, men, uh, animals, and so on. So I'm not sure the, the numbers are really precise, but it, uh, it gives an idea yeah. and a true idea. In manuscript sources, uh, the transmission is weak in general, yeah. and uh, the changes are possible, the mistakes are possible, and so on. And, when you say 40,000 40, people in Nejran, uh, in Tabari, uh, it is probably a great number. Uh, Lawrence uh, showed that 40, it means a great number. Yeah. You have very often 40,000 uh, 40, uh, and so on. So perhaps uh, this, in, the, in that case, it's not really precise. It's difficult to give uh, uh, the number of the population of Nejran we know that uh, when Nejran was occupied by the Ethiopian in the third century and reconquered by the Sabian, they destroyed, but I, I am not sure, 100 villages or something of this kind. So there was a big population, but uh, we have no number, no precise number. Yeah. The, the other thing I was going to ask is uh, the major difference between the inscriptions and the literary sources is, of course, the literary sources portray it uh, even as, I mean, the letter, of course, it's, it's Joseph supposedly speaking himself, portray it as explicitly this ideological program of Judaism against Christianity and blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't seem like it's really appearing in the inscriptions at all. Is that correct still? Oh. So, okay, I'll say it again. So, in the literary accounts, the portrayal is this is a conflict between Jews and Christians, right? The religion, the religious aspect is up in the front, but s still it seems in the inscriptions, that's not strong. The inscriptions are not strongly emphasized. Uh, the, the, the problem is very complicated. Yeah. According to the Christian geographies, Christians were supporting the King Yusuf. 
and especially the Church of the East. It was not a war again of, uh, from the Jews against, against the Christians. It was a war of some Jews against uh, some Christians. And the Christians connected with Aksum and Byzans. Uh, it was uh, at the first stage, at least, a political uh, conflict. After that, it's difficult to know because we have no inscriptions. So I am not completely sure. I suppose the religions the religion was not the real uh, uh, cause of the conflict, but in the in the story of the reconquest of Yemen by the king Caleb after the massacre of Nishran, it is presented as a crusade, a real crusade, and perhaps it's true because he killed all, all the Jews in Yemen, and uh, the Jewish population of the central part of Yemen was replaced by the tribe of uh, Murad and Madhij. Uh, Madhij in the west and Murad in the east. So it, it, perhaps it, it became uh, a crusade uh, uh, during the conflict. It was not uh, in, uh, at the beginning, but it's difficult to answer. Yeah, it's really interesting that now with this new material, there's not, you know, this, this thing. Like, yes, yeah, it's a different view. Uh, explanation from the results uh, uh, to present uh, the fact of uh, the past which are more complicated uh, uh, than supposed. Thank you. Professor Balashev. Christian, I have a question about the two Christian 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 is there any reference to these stories or names from the stories or details from these stories on the rock, on the inscriptions? Oh, Abraha is well known. And uh, we have uh, five, six new inscriptions describing the successes of Abraha, who reconquest all the peninsula, built the church, the, the date of the church is probably established, uh, and so on. Uh, so the, the frame of the reign is, uh, is well known. Uh, one point which is uh, complicated, we found uh, in Haima three designs of elephant, of an elephant on the rock. And there was no army with an elephant uh, in southern Arabia during uh, the Persian period, or the uh, Achaemenid period, or the, uh, during the Hellenistic period. So the unique solution is Abraha. Uh, Abraha parading with an elephant. So, and we know that Abraha, we know by other uh, clues that the armies of Abraha passed by Hema, and from Hema went uh, to Turban in the desert, and from Turban to Haliban, uh, and received uh, the submission of all the tribes of Central Arabia in Haliban, uh, because we have uh, uh, designs of uh, uh, cavalrymen of Abraha uh, in, uh, in Yemen, in uh, Hema, in Turban, and we can follow, uh, and uh, we, can, we can follow the way of the, the troop of Abraham. So we have, for the expedition in the Nejd, uh, historical uh, clues. For uh, Mecca, no, not at all. And uh, Mecca is a little bit complicated because uh, the feel, the origin of the feel, in my opinion, is uh, the expression Sanat el Fil, the year of the elephant. It's not the attack of the field or something like that. What is the meaning of Sanat el Fil? Uh, an elephant passing in the port of, uh, uh, what's, uh, not Jeddah, uh, Shuaiba, Shuaiba, uh, the, the port of Mecca, if I remember. Anyway, uh, the Axobites sent elephants regularly uh, to the emperor of Byzance. And it could be an elephant passing in one of the ports on the shore, 
and uh, surprising uh, the populations and uh, the people going to the show to see the Liverpool. Why not? Huh? It could be a war. Uh, there are many solutions, but the expression is not a war of the elephant, but uh, the, the year of the elephant. There was a year mar marked by an elephant. So I have no answer for that. Uh, for, uh, and El Urdoud is not uh, the name uh, of Nejran. Uh, Nejran uh, the name of the city of Nejran is Zerban. Zerban is well known because the name is attested uh, in Al Hamdani as the son of Amir. Amir is a tribe of Nejran. So in the genealogies, we have Amir, and the son of Amir is Zerban, the name of the city of Nejran. So Urdud is a projection from the Quran, perhaps by the people of uh, Nejran itself, on the site, but it was not the name of the site. It was a way to connect themselves with the Quran. And uh, Qabat, Qabat uh, of Nejran is interesting because the big temple of Nejran is called Ka'bat, with Alif, Ka'bat. And it's very easy to change Ka'bat in Ka'bat and to say we have a Kaaba. Thank you very much uh, for this interesting talk and discussion. So thank you very much.